When transitioning to the jet's programming, the flight computers can be intimidating and complex, but it doesn't have to be. Join me as we program an Airbus MCDU for a flight from Phoenix to Chicago. The MCDU at a glance can be confusing and hard to follow at times, but not everything is required to get you going. Let's take a look at what an MCDU might look like upon initial power-up of the aircraft. And again, at an initial glance, it doesn't look like we powered up anything. Ah, don't worry. On the right side of each computer, you'll see a BRT and a DIM button. All you have to do to wake your computers up from their slumber is press and hold the BRT button to increase the brightness for a few seconds. I'm going to turn on both computers because I use the right MCDU for simulator things such as fuel and payload and the left MCDU for the actual programming of the flight. Our focus today is going to be on the FMGC functionality so we can select it using the respective soft key on the top left. The first page you're met with is kind of like a status page. We only need to make a few checks on this page and we won't be making any inputs. The first check is your aircraft and its engines. I'm using the FS Labs A320X with the IAE engines for this, so these check out. Next is the Active Nav Database. This tells me I'm on Nav Cycle 2008 Revision 1 and the active date ranges check out. It's not necessary to have up to date Nav Cycle information, but it certainly helps and is recommended for the best experience. Lastly on this page is a little GPS primary lost message at the bottom of the MCDU screen. We can safely clear this by clicking the CLR button in the bottom right as we just started the alignment process for the instruments. Our next area of focus is the init button to take us to the initialization page. Here we are met with orange boxes and dashed lines. We have to input information into the orange boxes. I generally start with from and to. These are the airports you are flying from and to. To format this correctly, using the keypad, simply type in your departure airport, then the forward slash, and then your destination, all in one line, and click the respective soft key to fill the boxes under from and to. With company route and alternate company route now filled, we can input our flight number. These are typically three letters and four numbers, and for this flight, I'm using FSE0001. Next is your cost index. On this aircraft, it's a number between 0 and 999, with higher numbers giving less flight times, but at the cost of extra fuel burn. I'll be using 33 for this flight. Finally is the cruise flight level. This must be entered in the three digit flight level format. For this flight I'm going up to 33,000 feet or flight level 330, so I'll input 330 here. Notice how the temp was automatically filled in for us. Next comes the all important flight plan but we will be back to the init page. To enter the waypoints in our flight plan, we need to click the FPLN or flight plan button. In here we can see our departure and arrival airports separated by a discontinuity. This gap is where we make our first input. In my case, Tuco. Using the keypad, I'll type Tuco or T-U-K-K-O and using the left soft key, I'll place Tuco between the airports. Now we go from a calming green to an alarming yellow and orange color, and that discontinuity has moved down, separating our arrival airport and our first direct waypoint. It's okay though. 
We can now type in our next direct to Navade, which is Mike Mike Bravo, and I'll put this below Tuco, but before my destination where the discontinuity is using the respective left soft key, just like I did for Tuco before. Now from Mike Mike Bravo, I want to follow an airway and specifically the J26 jetway to IRK or India Romeo Kilo. To input an airway, we want to select the nav aid we are going to fly from using the respective soft key to the left of it. In this case here, it's Mike Mike Bravo. So I'll select Mike Mike Bravo using the respective soft key. Once the nav aid is selected, you'll see a selection for airways. Press the respective soft key for airways, and we're met with a blank page that says VIA with some brackets at the top. This is where we input our J26 jetway. Simply type J26 with the keypad and press the respective soft key to place it in the brackets. Now two and some brackets have appeared on the other side. Since we're flying Jetway 26 to IRK, we'll put IRK on this side. To get this into our flight plan, we need to click the TMPYFPLN soft key. Using the up and down arrow buttons to scroll through your flight plan, double check to make sure everything at this point is right before we input our SIDS and STARS or departures and arrivals. Any discontinuities at this point can be cleared by clicking the CLR or clear button on the bottom right of the keypad, followed by the respective soft key to the left of the discontinuity. Now we need to get our departure and arrival into the computer. Using the arrow keys to scroll through your flight plan, find your origin airport. As I was scrolling, a white GPS message appeared. I told you another GPS message would interrupt us. It's safe to say the GPS is working correctly now that things have had time to align and power up. And we can comfortably clear this message by pressing the clear button. Back to our departure and arrival situation. To select your departure, find your origin airport and press the respective soft key to the left of it. Using the respective departures soft key, we're met with a list of runways first. I'm expecting a 07 left Baldi 3 ACH transition for this departure, so I'll make those selections and just like when we did the airway, we want to select TMPY FPLN to temporarily insert these selections into our routing. Using the arrow keys and ignoring any new discontinuities at this time, search for your arrival airport and select it just like we did with the origin airport. Instead of departures, we're going to select the arrivals soft key. I'm expecting an ILS 22 left approach, so I'll use the up arrow button until I can see it and select it. We're doing the Bradford 7 IRK transition arrival into Chicago, so I'll select those as well. Any approach vias can be selected by pressing the respective vias soft key, but since we don't have any for this flight, we could just insert this into the flight plan just like we did for the departure. After we've done the departure and arrival, we can see some new discontinuities have appeared. Clear what you can by pressing the CLR button and then the soft key to the left of the discontinuity like before. Some may not let you clear them though. Looking above this discontinuity, we can see the waypoint is manual. This means it's vectored typically by ATC services. This also means while flying we'll either need to listen to ATC instruction or use the DIR button or direct to button for us to select the first nav aid after the discontinuity. 
With all the discontinuities cleared that we can clear, we now need to insert and activate your flight plan by pressing the respective insert soft key. Now that alarming yellow and orange color has turned to a more comfortable green color again. Now we need to go back to the init page. This time, press the right arrow to take you to the fuel prediction screen. Here, we have a few more boxes we need to fill in. We've got two options on filling these boxes. With the aircraft loaded, we can simply manually input these numbers, or we can click the respective soft key once, and then click again to have it auto-populate for us. With this info entered and the flight plan in, we have a more accurate fuel prediction page than if we were to have filled this out before doing the routing. Last but not least is the PERF or performance page, accessed by clicking the PERF button. We can see some orange boxes again, which we will get to, but first are the flaps. This format is a bit unique in that it's your flap setting, which must match one of the options for the aircraft, followed by your trim, whether up or down, as shown by this scale on the trim wheel. On the left in the green arc, we see up one and two, and down one and two, and these are your trim numbers. Then on the right we have CG numbers, or center of gravity. With our current gross weight CG, which just so happens to be 23.6 for this flight, we can follow this scale to the left of the CG number to get the trim number we need for our flaps slash THS input. I'm seeing about 1.2 trim up with our current gross weight CG. Don't get your zero fuel CG confused here. You need your gross weight center of gravity. Now to input this in the correct format, I'm using flaps one for this flight. So I'll put one, then a forward slash, then the trim setting we just got off of the scale on the trim wheel with the direction up or down before the decimal number. If your trim setting is down, use DN for down. Next comes your flex 2 temp is how it reads. It's actually flex takeoff temp. This temperature in Celsius is how an Airbus does a derated takeoff. Essentially, it reduces the allotted takeoff power depending on the temp you input. While in the flex max climb thrust detent on the throttles. This aids in maintenance cost and fuel consumption, amongst other things, I'm sure. For this flight, I'm using 35. It is worth noting that flex thrust is not used on a wet, snowy, or icy runway, or when you're taking off at high altitudes when it's hot outside. Finally is your V speeds, and to get this info populated, simply click each respective soft key twice to populate the boxes. Now your MCDU is ready for the flight. If you guys learned from this video, please give us a thumbs up. Want to see more? Subscribe and ring that bell to be notified of our next release. Feedback is always welcome in the comments section. This was Ronnie, and as always, until next time.